Hello friends, this video on electrochemistry part 18 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Having understood the metallic conductance, let's understand the electrolytic conductance. Right? So it's old conductivity of a solution of electrolyte is called electrolytic solution conductance. Correct? Conductivity of an electrolyte solution is called electrolytic conductance. It is caused by movement of ions. Please know NN plus Cl minus ion. So it is caused by movement of ions. They are generally caused by movement of ions. Ions are the critical thing here. Earlier in the metallic conductance, it was electron which was the elect current carrier. Here the ions are the current carrier. Correct. So it is caused by the movement of ions within the sol solution of electrolyte under the influence of applied electric potential difference. For example, if you add a battery, there is a potential difference between these two. The potential difference between these two, right? Because they are connected now, and with this, the ions will carry current. Correct. As I already told, conductance is inversely proportional to resistance. So I can say here also, electrolytic conductance will also be nothing but G will be nothing but one by electrolytic. Resistance that is R. Correct. So Ohm's law is true here also. Ohm's law is true here also, which we have studied in physics. So we know that V is equal to IR. Right, the Ohm's law. This is nothing but the electric potential difference in volt. Since we are using in chemistry E instead of volt, V will use E term. E is equal to IR. Or it will be E is equal to IR. Because we use electric potential is IR. Right? Where I is the current and R is the resistance. Right? Here if you want to find the resistance, again I told R is nothing but rho L by the same formula. Rho is resistivity, L is the length, A is area. So this L is what? L is the distance between two parallel plates. This is the L. And what is A? A is the nothing but area of cross section of the solution which is in contact with electrode. So this one is my A, the one which I have. Because only this much area of the electrode is in contact with the solution. This is my A. Correct. So it is not the area of the whole, please note the A is not the area of the whole electrode. A is the area of only the electrode that is in contact with the solution. And rho we know that is nothing but specific resistance or resistivity. Right. And please note for any cell if you have constructed this L by A will be constant right because the length between these two electrodes will be constant and this area will also be constant because it will have fixed volume of solution. So this L by A since it is a constant volume value L by A and this constant for a cell it is also called cell constant. Why? Because length and area is constant for a given cell. Right? So L by A will be constant for a given cell. It's also called cell constant. Correct? So the other formula which we studied was kappa is equal to 1 by rho. This is also true here also. Correct? Please note, if you have, if you see the pure water, it will have very very low conductivity. The bulb may not glow also, but if we dissolve the electrolytes in this, for example NaCl, the bulb will glow, the conductivity increase. So in this case, the conductivity depends on what? The nature of electrolytes, obviously if you see, if you add NaCl, the bulb glow more. If you add a weak electrolyte, for example acetic acid, the bulb glows less, right? So I can say, I can say that the conductivity Here also depends on one, the nature of electrolytes that we have seen. The next is the size of ions produced. Why? Because the, here the ions are the carrier, right? So if I have an Na plus ion or I have CH3, CO minus ion, there is a difference in the size. So size of ions produced is something which is critical. Also, the nature of solvent. Why? I will tell you the nature of solvent because if the solvent is very viscous, it will, it is very thick, it will obstruct the flow of ions, right? 
so viscosity of uh, solvent also plays a role fourth increase in temperature so please note here it's a little different scenario here so if we increase the temperature what happens the mobility of ions also increases right because see it here the ions are the carrier you see the one which was moving in the last slide right the red dots which were jumping around here there they are the carriers the mobility of the ions also increase and the mobility of the cations also increase right all the ions they increase since the mobility of the ions increase the conductivity also increase that is one part second part if you increase the temperature the viscosity of solution decrease since the viscosity of solution decrease the ions can move around easily and thus conductivity also increase correct so it depends on nature of electrolyte size of ions nature of solvent all and for the temperature there is a different ball game here in the case of metal conductance the metal conductance is because of electrons so if you increase the temperature see in both cases the moment you increase the temperature the atoms move around here and there right here the we have ions so they move around here and there but since in the case of metal the atoms move around here and there it is difficult for electrons to pass through so the moment you heat a metal the conductivity decrease but in case of here, this scenario the moment you increase the temperature the ions move around here and there and here the temperature uh, the conductance is because of ions only and thus the conductivity increase let's do a recap of what we have studied about the metallic conductance and the electrolytic conductance so as i told in metallic conductance my electrons are the carrier of uh, Uh, current so in this electrolytic conductance my ions are the carrier of current right the metallic conductance happens in metal under the influence of electric potential difference obviously and this happens in electrolytes under the again influence of electric potential difference here the conductivity decrease with increase in temperature i have showed you why the conductivity decrease with increase in temperature because the atoms here moves around in both case when you increase temperature right implies atoms or ions they move around move around at higher speed correct now but in this case the moment atoms move around in the higher state since the carrier is electron for electron it is difficult to pass through this high speed moving atoms ions but in this case the moment you heat the temperature the atoms of the ions move atoms oh, here we have ions only sometimes we have atoms also because for weak electrolyte if you see not all the atoms break into ions right so the atoms and ions they move around at a high speed and but here the carrier is atoms and ions itself the ions itself are the carrier Right, so this is the carrier itself. Uh, the carrier current carrier is ions itself. So as we increase the temperature, the conductivity increases. Okay, so they have generally have high conductivity, very very high conductivity. Electrolytes generally have very low conductivity. So, and uh, the moment if you use uh, a metal for passing electricity for a long time, you won't see any difference in the metal. Metal will be the same. But if you use electrolytes for passing electricity for a long time. you see there is a change in the electrolytes concentration especially if you used dc current right the electrolytes concentration may change this is something we'll see uh in the next few slide also if you see the nernst equation also implies the same thing for a cell the concentration change over a period of time and here also since the um, same electrolyte is used for a long time the concentration will change and the resistance in this case is due to vibrating nuclei in the vibrating atoms here and here because it is electron which has to pass through this uh, vibrating nuclei but in this case the resistance is due to ionic attraction viscosity of the solvent and solvation of the solids resistance is because of some another reason right because the main difference is this is electron this is the ions itself so that is the difference between the metallic conduction and electrolytic conduction so we have seen a lot of uh, we have 
seeing a lot of new terms resistance resistivity conductance conductivity right so let's do a recap of all the si units because these are little critical for us right so we have seen that resistance is rho l by a. that is one formula we have given right so let's talk about resistance first denoted by r and si unit is ohm correct and ohm is nothing but kg meter square per second cube a square we don't need this formula anyway so si unit is ohm just focus on that and the and the formula is r is equal to rho l by a the next is opposite of resistance that is conductance denoted by g there is nothing but 1 by r and if you put the same formula this becomes a l by rho correct so si unit for this is siemens s i e m e n s denoted by s here we have ohms here we have siemens right this siemens is nothing but per ohm also called mo right this is what it is because conductance is nothing but one by resistance third we have resistivity something but rho this value rho this is also called specific resistance right and this si unit is ohm meter we have seen that why because this is l by a is nothing but 1 by meter so you put this side so this rho becomes r into if you see it rho becomes r a by l right find the unit resistance is ohm a is meter square and length is meter this gets cancelled this becomes rho meter so si unit is rho meter right and rho centimeter is also used so one rho meter is nothing one one rho meter is nothing but 100 rho centimeter so both are used actually but rho meter is the si unit so opposite of resistivity is nothing but conductivity is nothing but kappa and nothing but one by rho right so its si unit is Siemens per meter. Similar to this, we have a uh, rho meter here. This is Siemens per meter. Correct. So conductivity of a material is its conductance when it is one meter long and its cross section is one meter square. Correct. So if you want to see the relation bit similar to here, we have hundred Siemens per meter is nothing but one Siemens per centimeter we can do the math and see why it is right so th that is all about uh, the four different uh, terms we have seen resistance conductance resistivity conductivity and the SI units for these terms because these are essential to solve numericals these are the common ones if you see the conductor sodium copper silver gold this is the conductivity if you talk about the insulator, conductivity is pretty less. If you talk about the aqueous solution, conductivity is there, but you see the units, this is 10 to the power 3. This is nothing, right? So compare these two, they have very, very high conductivity. Also, if you see the conductivity of the solution depends on the molarity. For example, in both cases, you have HAC is the aqueous solution. But the molarity is different, the concentration is different, and they have different conductivity. Semiconductor, we have uh, CO, silicon, germanium. So, we won't study much about semiconductor. We have studied this in the last chapter itself. And glass and all, if you see, the conductivity is pretty bad, and they are called insulators. Almost they don't conduct electricity. Right? They told the unit of conductivity is Siemens per meter. That is the SI unit of conductivity. 
Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.